are the things you'll learn in this video. We will be making a basic two-pass border. I'm going to show you some of the types of mistakes that you can catch by testing your border. And I've learned a lot and made a lot of mistakes, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to give you some insights into how to troubleshoot your border. Before we begin on the borders, there are a few things that are important to know about borders. Uh, the last thing the machine stitch is the outlines object, and that is why we do the first pass, mainly with connections and columns. The machine will sew two separate passes to do the border. If it's a circle, it'll just continue on, but if it's a line, it will do two separate passes. The second pass can be independent. Um, I learned eventually that it did not have to touch the first pass, and I didn't realize that at first. And you can uh, stitch it in one color or two, but you do have to use some tricks when you switch to the second part of the border. I'm a fairly new digitizer, and so there may be some things that I don't totally understand yet, but I have really uh, delved into the border area because it was useful to me. The most important part of the two-pass border is pass number one. If you can get pass number one right, then pass number two ends up being very easy. The method that we're going to talk about mainly in this video is what I call method one. And in this method, you will use connection objects and you'll end with a column object. There are two other methods that I know of that I have played around with. One method, or method number two, is to create a fake column object. And method number three is you start with the end connection. Now, that, I know that sounds strange, but you'll understand it better once you know how to do the other methods. Pass two is relatively easy. It can contain outlines and connections, and often it is mainly outlines. The same method is used for all three types of borders. So once you learn pass one and the options there, pass two will be quite easy. Uh, you can see on the picture that's just come in here that the top part of this border in blue was done with just all connections down to here and then you can see a column object at the end. The next part of the border is done with all outlines and you can see that the only trim is where the colors changed. So that should be what your two-pass border looks like once you've digitized it. Example of a two-pass border using this method. It starts on the left with a connection object in the orange. It goes up and does a column object for the cherries. And it comes down here, does another cherry. And it ends with a column object ending on the far side. The connection at the beginning matches up to the end of the column object on the right side. Right there. The green is entirely outlines. So it starts on the left, does a curly cue, and then a backward path comes over here, uh, another curve and a backward path, and it ends over on the right-hand side. Uh, the con it connects up to the beginning outline object like that. It turns out, I thought that they had to actually be close to each other or touching. It turns out they do not. The second pass can be entirely independent as long as it stays within the size parameters of the border area. Here we are in the border area of Emberd. I find it very hard to digitize and talk at the same time, so what I've done is loaded a border and I'm going to show you just a quick step-by-step -step of how I did it. Um, I start with a connection on the left side and it's going to the end of a leaf. Uh, the leaf is a column object and it gets stitched uh, down so that it meets the bottom of the connection. The next one is another connection. Then I have a scroll and then a backward path of the scroll, which you can't see there. And I did group these and actually copy them because I used it later. Here's another connection, another scroll forward and backward, another connection to the end of the next leaf. There's the full leaf uh, column object, another connection, and then I'm ending with a column object right there. And I'm just going to show you the nodes for the column object and you can see the end node right there and the beginning node right there. Now I'm going to just escape from that and we're going to go down to the preview area and I have already tweaked this and fixed it. There, some of the connections needed some help but you can see what it looks like and it is coming out of the end of the column object and then continue on to the next iteration of the border. So it looks like this pass one is okay I have stitched it out and I know it works, but um, you, it is a good idea to test. The next part of the border um, is the second pass, and I'm going to highlight that right now. And 
for this one I used a circle and I made it an outline object and um, it started over here and it looks great on this screen. So there's my circle. However, when I went to uh, check this one out in testing, I realized that I'd made a mistake. The circle starts here, it goes all the way around here, and it ends here. So what I saw in my mistake was that I had a whole connection running all the way across to the other side of the circle. So I had to fix that. So testing your borders is very important. I'm going to show you a picture in the next video of what this looked like in the test. When I went to test this border out, although it looked fine in the border area, when I started looking at it, it had started here. It had stitched all the way around back to the beginning, and then it sewed a connection and ended up starting the next border. So the problem was I'd only put one pass and it ended up back at the beginning rather than over on the side. So the question is how to fix this. So I'm going to highlight my object and look at the nodes. And a really useful thing for borders is to be able to split objects. So I go over to the node on the right, I right click on it, and I go down to split object. And now I have two halves of the circle. The first half goes left to right, second half goes right to left. And I need another half here that will go back over to the end side. So all I have to do is to go control C and control V. And you can see that that third object now is in the objects bar. And now that border stitches out perfectly, and I'll show you a sample later on. I wanted my second pass to be a little bit darker, so what I did over here is here's my first pass, second pass of the two halves, and here's where we stopped in the last video. I've added three more segments so that the border would be a little bit darker on the pink part. So that all looks okay. So it starts here. Then it goes around, goes to the top again, then the bottom again, and it ends up over on the side over here. So I'll just show you that, and there's the end node over on that side. So what I did, whoops, escape there. What I did then is I'm going to group that section. I'm just going to pull my bar down a little bit here. So I'm going to, oops, I'm going to just pull that down and go to a group one. So through experimentation, I discovered that if I pulled that out into an oval, I was under the assumption I had to stay in the bounding box, but as it turns out, you don't. So here's what that border looked like. However, when I went to stitch it out, I did have a little bit of an issue, so I'm going to show you what that looks like in the next video. So here's my test file loaded, so I've made a straight line, made it curve a little bit, when I put the border in at a 20 millimeter size, I can see that what happened is that it ends over here and then it put in a connection to go up here. So if we look at that, um, if we generate stitches on that and then go down to 3D, that actually would show. Let's go to 3D. Okay, so you can see that there's a piece that I don't want that has made a connection there. So what I do is I have to go back and put a connection in from here up to the intersection there. So that's the fix that ended up working for that border. So in order to fix that, here's what I did. I went over to my circle, or my oval now. I ungrouped it, okay, and so that I could see all of the pieces. And then when I put on the nodes, control E, I can see that the iterations of the oval ended on the right here, but then it appears to start stitching up here at the boundary of the border box. So what I did was I added a connection. So I go over here, I'm just going to escape out of that. I go to the connection and I start there and then I put the end of that connection up where the border boundary is and I make that match the circle there, or the oval. Okay, and I accept that, and I won't show you the test again, but this border stitched out fine after doing that. So that was the little troubleshooting piece that ended up working for that particular border. So it looks like when you go beyond the bounding box, um, you have to put in some kind of a connection to get the border back into the box. Here's the next sample I'd like to show you. The one pass, I'm just going to quickly take you through connection, 
column object connection, column object back to the bot or to the left hand side connection up to the end leaf there, uh, stitches the leaf connection to the bottom again, stitches up to the top of the or the right hand side of the column, and then it ends with a column object right there. And I'll just show you the end nodes. So that is the end right there, and it matches up with the beginning. Uh, this stitch is out well, uh, no problem. So to do the second pass, it's very important that you change colors. Otherwise, uh, it does not work and you end up with sticky connections. So even if you're stitching in the same color, make sure that you actually change the colors in Ember. So I'm going to go with a dark green now. And I'm going to start with an outline. So the whole second pass will, will be done with outlines. So I'm going to make a scallop type of border. So I'm just going to click three clicks here and I have actually I'll have a sample to show you on this so I'm going to turn that into a little scallop this is very tiny and that is a bit of a problem when you stitch it out now I have that segment done and I'm going to go over to the mirror image here and that gives me a scallop all the way across so I'm going to accept that with enter and then I'm going to go control B to go backwards and then all I have to do is copy that first object uh, to get back over to the right side. So control C, control V, and that added in the third part of the scallop. So you can see there's pass one to the right, pass two to the left, and then pa pass three goes back to the right. So that's the end. Uh, this border actually did stitch out quite nicely and I'll show you the sample. Um, it is, however, really, really tiny stitching because there's too many scallops. Here's how that one stitched out. You can see this is at a, a 15 by 20, and the scallop stitches are a little too small, so I probably won't use this. I will probably change that scallop. The top part did stitch out okay. It's a little bit dense, though. The last border I'm going to show you in this video is a little mouse with some cheese. I have grouped some of the elements just to speed up things. So I start with a connection on the left, then a column object for the ear. I go all the way around the body. I've done some grouping here, but the whiskers were done with forward and backward paths. Uh, and then the eyes were done. They're, these are very, very tiny. And nose, the other whiskers, uh, which again are grouped and then it goes back and does a double pass around the body and this ends with a column object and I'm just going to show you where it ends so the last the end of it is right here so this will become important shortly and I'm just going to escape down here you can see the preview area when I originally digitized this I used the method 2 but I moved the mouse over and realized I could do it with method 1 and end with a column object at the ear. So sometimes it pays just to, even if you think you can't end with a column object, sometimes there are some workarounds that end up being okay. So this is the first pass uh, and it's stitched out very well. And then the second pass I have grouped over here and I'm just going to ungroup it now. Oh, maybe I didn't group it. Oh, I, I know what I did. I did it all in one pass. So I'll just turn it on. So this was all outlines. You can see over in the box here. And I just came here. I went up and around to do the cheese and then eventually back over here. And the first part lines up with the second part. Keep in mind you can use the rulers sometime to bring them down and make sure that the parts are going to match. Um, when this was stitched out, what I found out is that the connection actually ended up stitching from the end of the column object here down. Um, but the stitch out on this, is it's a really cute border. It's definitely at the edge of um, what you can do size-wise. Uh, and I have a sample that I'll show you after this. Here's a stitch out of the mice border. You can see that the ear column object ends right there. And what the machine does is it puts in a connection down to the border area. So this part right here is not actually, you don't see it in the preview, but the machine does put it in. So you have to be careful and look at that and make sure that it is somewhere that you're happy with. 
The most common problem when you're doing borders is unwanted scissors in either the first pass or the second pass. Usually you need to check your nodes, your forward and backward path, and sometimes if you've been changing colors, there'll be a color mistake that will cause that. So usually you're able to fix these. It's similar to other digitizing. The second most common problem is sticky connections, especially between the first and the second pass. Um, if that happens, really look at the first pass first and then look at the second pass. Usually there's a problem with your beginning or ended, ending nodes in one of the passes. And make sure if you're using method one that you do have a column object at the end. And sometimes you just get a general mess. And if that happens, usually I start over and make sure that I check each pass that it works before adding on uh, the second pass.